If you're just opening Ableton Live 12 for the first time, these are gonna be the preferences that you'll want to copy to start working in a more streamlined, time-saving manner. Let's start by opening up the preferences pane. Ableton can be overwhelming at the best of times, so make it easier on yourself from the get-go by choosing a zoom value that doesn't strain your eyes. I like to set move clips with arrow keys to off so I don't move a clip by mistake and then when I move it back, there's the middle of my clip missing. It's not often that I'm gonna use the arrow keys instead of the trackpad. It's good to know that reduced automatic colors is found here. If you want to have a more in-keeping palette, then keep this option off. I like to have a clear contrast between my tracks, so I leave it on. File and folder. In this tab, you may want to adjust your maximum cache size if you're worried about Ableton using up space on your hard drive for your cached samples. This is easy enough to clean up with this button, so it's a good thing to bear in mind. In the library tab, you can hide show cloud and show push, creating just a teeny bit of real estate in your places side panel over here. If you quickly exit preferences and add folder, you can add your own Ableton folder in the side panel. This will make it easier for you to access previous projects and any devices you may have used. Plugins. Make sure auto hide plugin windows is set to on so that when you jump to a new track, your open plugin windows are hidden so you don't overwhelm yourself and get lost in the mix. Record warp launch. There's a few settings to look at here, but first change your bit depth to 32 because it's better quality and when you consolidate or freeze and flatten your clips, it will use the same recording algorithm to do this. So you want it in the highest quality, which is 32. You'll probably want counting on, but select the right amount of bars that gives you enough breathing room. Loop or warp short samples set to auto, but auto warp long samples set that to off. That is a mouthful. Ableton Live's warping algorithm has got so much better, but I'm only ever gonna really use long samples if I'm in a mixing session. And by that point, I don't wanna warp or do anything to my samples. So I keep that option off. <laughs> also set your warp mode to complex instead of rhythmic. It won't sound as choppy on melodic samples. And turn off create fade on clip edges. This will wreak havoc on your transient clips like kicks, snares, and hi-hats. Lastly, draw mode with pitch lock on so that when you hit B and highlight all of those hats, your pitch is locked to that note. Outside of your preferences, ready your hotkeys and MIDI mapping. That's Command K and Command M. Use the spare keys that aren't already bound to shortcuts to create new ones. The waveform size, for instance, or global record. Don't forget that this video is sponsored by DistroKid. They make it so easy to get your music out there. They've got loads of promotional tools, stuff for marketing, and even visuals to make your Spotify canvases look so pro. If you wanna get 7% off your first year, then just use the link in the description below. Next up, as I showed in my Live 11, Live 12 side-by-side -side video, check it out in the top right if you haven't seen that. You wanna to head to the top of the page, choose View, then Arrangement Track Controls. You wanna set Keep Latency to Off. You probably won't want latency when you're recording. And now that live can get around that, you can save it as a default track. Just right click on the MIDI track, save as default, and then do the same for the audio track. Now everything will be perfectly in time. Whilst we're saving tracks as default, there's probably gonna be some devices that you use time and time again on each track. So put those into a group and save those as the default on each track, audio and MIDI as well. It's probably easier to start with the effects that you'll commonly use on your main or master the channel as well. So from the get-go, add a limiter, spectrum, and anything else you think you'll need on the master channel. If everything is arranged exactly how you'd like it, then save it as your own template, and then that way it's good to go every time you sit down to Ableton. I should mention that this whole template is available at the Patreon in both Live 11 and Live 12 formats should you need it. So check that out after for tons of downloadable content. As you continue to use Live 12, you'll have your preferred go-to instruments and effects. I like to create collections for better organization, which you can later rename. To add something to a collection, you just want to go to your chosen devices and use the number keys between one and seven. Here I'm hitting the number two, which is adding the devices to my effects group. 
Don't forget that for further organization, you can also use filters. To add something to a filter group, just choose your selected plugin. Here, I'm gonna use the example of Valhalla Vintage Verb. We're gonna come up to edit and then choose Reverb. This has now been added to my Reverb group inside devices. If this is something that I wanna to add to the sidebar in library, I can just hit the plus icon. And now I have a new group called Reverb in the sidebar. For now guys, that's all I've got on preferences, but let me know down in the comments what you wanna see in future content, whether it's Ableton focused, genre, or anything else. Thanks so much for swinging by, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>